That's kind of like a sad poop. <laughs> we are going to be testing eye bolts in this episode. Now, zinc plated bolts are not going to last as long as stainless, except in this very unique situation. I'll let my friends in Portugal explain. We are going down there to Fojo, and we will talk about this. We are right next to the sea. As we know, the seashore can provide a pretty harsh environment for all the bolts. And we are quite amazed with the durability of these ones. These are the Cozy Rock Blue Winds. They are a single piece of forged mild steel. These bolts have been used since the late 1980s in sport climbing routes all over Portugal, Spain, France and Italy. In Portugal, we have a lot of crags by the seashore on limestone formations. And in these conditions, the austenetic stainless steel can get corroded quite easily, like in five years or less. The 304 wedged bolts, uh, we have dozens of registered failures, as well for the 304 glue-ins. In the case of the 316 wedged bolts, they seem to hold better, but they will still rust. The biochemical process, yes, biochemical process responsible for such quick corrosion of stainless steels is finally being unraveled by a lengthy research carried out by David Reeve. It isn't just the chloride induced stress corrosion cracking that we are used to, but also, and more importantly, a sulfid stress cracking caused by sulfate reducing bacteria that live in tiny oxygen depleted cracks inside the stainless steels. And this is all helped by the fact that the austenitic stainless steels are quite brittle and develop a lot of tiny cracks. So long story short, since 2015, there has been a countrywide effort in Portugal to replace stainless steel bolts by titanium. Titanium can be really expensive. As such, the root setters around this area kept using what they knew that were safe, the cozy rock bolts. We have them by 300s and we don't have any registered failures on them. You will either find them with a lot of rust to a point where no sane person will climb on them or will, they will look just fine. Unlike the stainless steel that can develop cracks that are not possible to see with the naked eye. When correctly applied, they can last 20 years until they start to show signs of rust. These ones in particular have 6 years and they look uh, as new unlike the 304 that you saw back there. Let's clarify that plated steel is a thin coating of zinc, which is the sacrificial coating that corrodes instead of the steel, but once gone, will rust quickly. Now this had no zinc on it, but you can see what happens if there's nothing to sacrifice. Now this galvanized eye bolt has a lot more zinc on it, which is why it's lasting longer than let's say Tonsai Thailand, where they had zinc plated bolts breaking under six months. You can think of this as lightly buttering a piece of chicken before grilling it versus deep frying it. Taking into account a 20 year life spent for the quasi rock bolts and 70 years for titanium, they are neck to neck in terms of durability per price. The lower upfront cost and just plain habit are enough to convince the old school root setters to keep using them. Sure, due to, to, due to the more frequent replacements, they will have a higher long-term cost, but the point is they are still being employed on new and refurbished routes around here. Now it is hard to break a habit and a culture of people using a specific bolt, and there's no doubt that titanium lasts longer. For a little math experiment here, let's assume four times longer. Now a galvanized bolt such as this is going to cost me around $6, and this certified titanium bolt is going to cost me between $11 and $13. Now when you consider the time to install it, the glue that it takes, which is expensive, the time to install it, the additional holes that you would get putting this in the rock four times versus once, the time to install it, and then the time to uninstall and reinstall it four times versus once, all to save $5 today? Now, crags don't just bolt themselves, so make sure you are supporting your local bolting fund. Krabi Bolting Fund has support from their local community and they are installing titanium. And we actually just put out a episode recently about what they're using and we tested it. Holy crap. These bolts here have been used for climbing for at least 40 years, although they have not been certified and there are no published tests about them. We are really curious to see how they will break, how they will handle your pullout tests. 
We know that you are not a certified body and we are not trying to get any MBS number. We are just really curious to see how they will break. Our guess is that these ones, the 10 millimeter, will break around 45 kilonewtons. And these ones, the 12 millimeter, will break around 55 kilonewtons. We came to Nevada and we installed this into the sidewall, into the best rock we could. And we put our hydraulic in the back of this thing and we're gonna be pulling away from us uh, to be safe. I guess we're already in a mine that we We're not gonna be in. be in it while we're breaking. Oh, that's true. But after it breaks, we're gonna run in there and go, wow, after every brake test. So we have a forged dive bolt connected to our hydraulics here. We're gonna start with the stainless and stainless, and then we're gonna go with the zinc plated and zinc plated. And this Liquid Rock 500 is cured, installed about 13 hours ago, which is super good enough for the temperatures we're in, which is Ryan and a light puffy. Steel carabiner to soft shackle, bigger soft shackle to our big yellow span set that we did the adjustable thing. We have our slower downer blanket thing so it just doesn't go flying everywhere. The thing I'm really excited about is this is the first session of tests we're doing where we actually have this load cell that gives us a graph. And so we have to be kind of careful with the cable. This red rope keeps the hydraulic from flying back when this releases all of its tension instantly. And then we have a cascading sliding X system over there where it's just sliding X's on sliding X's on sliding X's because our anchor has failed so many times on this trip. We've spent more time installing bolts over there than we have over there. We have our hydraulic pump, which is usually under our slack snap machine the battery and the charger that's connected to a generator out there when we need to charge it for science. Yes! That's kind of what I guessed. These are short bolts. That is good slow -mo. Oh yeah? Oh, that is that is pretty cool. Did you see this? It's spinning inside the carabiner. Oh, oh yeah. I guess it can spin inside that carabiner. 36.53, and we stopped here for the slow motion. It looks like a P bolt, dude. Yeah, totally. Huh, wonder how much more life it had in that. A lot. <laughs> it does definitely give that vibe. You use forged die bolts as well, right? Yes, half inch forged dies up to uh, eight inches in length. Because the rock's bad. Yeah, the 10 inch ones were like uh, 11, $11. Oh, so they're not cheap. But can but compare it for the for the size you're getting. Oh, it would cost a lot. Do they make glue in bolts that are they're forged? Super long? Not Furniture. forged. Jim at Bolt Products will make long uh, like twist bolts. Mm, he'll do custom if you want it. Yeah. Yeah, it smells funky, doesn't it? Thirty three point three two. So the rock did not fail first, and it still pulled out. So it's definitely going to be a length versus the glue adhesion issue. Yeah, it doesn't have deep enough grooves. I think a longer bolt would definitely have done better. But 33 kilonewtons is adequate for most of what I do. So this would be the same result in granite with this? Uh, yeah, I think it Because the rock did not fail at all. Yeah. You use long eye bolts. Yeah. Oh, that's even like a half inch. Yeah, half of inch. If, if this stayed intact, this would be breaking north of 50 kilonewtons. What are you doing over here, Cheryl? Some data entry. Where can people find all this data? On your website. Bolting Bible has the book of numbers. I've organized everything. I've color coded everything you need to see. Uh, this spreadsheet is no longer like useful to anybody because it's kind of like great notes for me, but like hard for you to understand. But the book of numbers is super helpful because it shows you how this bolt compares to this bolt or if we did wet sandstone regardless of the bolt or if we tested like if we twist p-shaped bolts just go right to it and see everything we've done whether it's granite limestone or sandstone donations are super helpful no how is our anchor failing Dude, I just want to break two more bolts and go have lunch. The hot dip galvanized mm -hmm. is a little bit rougher coating than the uh, stainless steel. So it's grabbing the glue. Come on. It's like eight bolts. It's like eight bolts. 53. We broke the eye bolt. I wondered how it would happen. If it would be at the, the neck or there. And it's a P-shaped bolt now.
13.69 kilonewtons. The first was there and then it took only five and a half kilonewtons and then about eight or nine to pull it out. Yeah, that so really- dumped this in a calcite vein. Yeah, yeah, we got it in calcite. Yeah, this is the vein right here. It's definitely bent because the rock was just giving away underneath it, wasn't holding it in. The eye still looks like an eye, so it's, it's not deforming into a P. No. Until like 30s or 40s, like this one did. Put that long big one in the same vein and see what we get. Put big brother in. 5 8 bit for the half inch galvanized forged eye. Same hole. They go in the same hole. A little bit of the cinnabar right there. Did you just hit better rock? Still a little bit better, but I'm also getting a little bit of binding too, so I'm going to clean out the hole. Sometimes I notice the limestone can be a little damp and it starts taking up. Being longer, larger diameter, you just have that much more surface area. Oh my gosh. Aren't those fun? So much glue. Hey, your glue cost is as much as your bolt cost. I, I just think the anchor is going to break. That's all. If you don't have a cotter pin, you can tape your pin shut. Oh man, that rock's going to explode. Wow. It's smoking in there. Oh, this was like the calcite, right? Yeah. So this was like this is pretty almost... bad rock. Yeah. 57.58. That's pretty impressive for that glue. I guess tape is not as good as a cotter pin. Whoa, check this out. The glue just, it slid right out of the glue where it didn't have threads. When you say slid right out. Um, at 10,000 pounds at of force. 10,000 pounds of force. <laughs> so let's see how that long one does without any glue. <laughs> 10 slow-mos to capture that. 7.3. So the first time it went down was seven. That's a cool graph. That's why the graph is helpful. You're gonna try to put it back in? I'm trying to make a U-bolt. It's a really yeah. long bolt. This is how they make U-bolts. If you'll notice here, this started engaging in the rock. Ah. Oh. looks like. My thought is people should use glue. <laughs> so we're gonna test the next size up of eye bolts that we got from Portugal. Those are 12 millimeters. And we're gonna reuse the holes that we already uh, had the really good rock that it didn't really fail. We'll find out how much more force this 12 millimeter eye gets. Well, it's gonna be hard to figure out the MBS of this if the glue is failing at 30 something. I mean, the rock was great. 35.15. 35 kilonewtons is in a climbing context, which these are used in a climbing context, is amazing. What does it smell like in here, you guys? It's like um, burned Bur something. Burnt plastic. Burned. 54.8. Wow. Amazing. This is where we slow down for the slow motion. Um, because it takes a minute to trigger finished pulling. Well, so like same length, same glue, same everything. Where, where, which hole was this? Oh, it's also got a fracture. Looks like a little bit of a rock failure. I'm just surprised like we got so much more out of this one. Was that as good for you as it was for us? It was amazing. You're just laying on barbed wire? Well, it's a uh, suspension. Ow. <laughs> yes, you are super not helpful. What do you think of the data there, Z? <laughs> 20 more kilonewtons with basically the sa same yes, everything the same everything that's wild i'm going to be using this sormat resin that i got from europe a uh, bolt buster setup uh to a new spot so we can pull straight out of this wall glue comes out of the nozzle just fine when it's cold out whereas liquid rock 500 really sucks when it's cold uh, you can heat up the tube by keeping it in your jacket or something but it's it, uh, you have to be mindful of that so no glue came out when I pushed that in, and I like having all that glue around the bolt, so I know that's gonna be in all those grooves. I can always stick this back in and add more glue. I don't have any air bubbles, and I have just a little bit of glue on the outside there that I can wipe off nice and neat. Yeah, it pulled. The threads on this thing aren't really thick. Kind of a more oval shape. Oh, some of the rock's bald. 
point eight seven. Didn't even deform that much. It, it's just like these grooves just aren't. And that's the stainless steel too. Yeah, yeah. The galvanized I think engages more, like the with the glue. But I mean that's pretty bomber. I mean this eye is not gonna break before the glue. That's thirty six point five one. Well, that was way better. Oh, that was galvanized. Yeah. The texture the, or the chemistry of the galvanized likes. Yeah, the galvanized likes yeah, the, the glue. The rougher coating. 51.36. Morning. Pulled out of the hole, just like the other ones. You can see the scratch marks. It's interesting. I would whip. <laughs> it's consistently higher being galvanized as opposed to stainless, but stainless technically lasts longer. Well, they last longer everywhere except near the ocean if installed in limestone. Now, David guessed 45 kilonewtons for the 10 millimeter eye bolts, and they broke when we could break them at 53. But what's interesting is the glue was the weakest link, and they would pull out before they'd break, which I don't know if they were expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. Obviously, you don't just go up a size with a bolt for its strength, but as you saw, you could get more strength out of the rock if you have a longer bolt or a fatter bolt for surface area. There's a lot that goes into this, and you should check out the Bolting Bible to learn more about stuff before you put in bolts. Check it out if you just trust your life to them so you know what you're clipping to. Now, in case you don't know, it's pretty rare for a bolt to see more than four kilonewtons, and the gear that you're clipping to it is rated for 20 ish kilonewtons. So if you're getting over 25 kilonewtons on a bolt, it's technically super good enough. We are not only trying to break gear fear on this channel, but promote long-term thinking when considering what you're gonna bolt. Because you never know what the future is going to hold. There is a wilderness area at Joshua Tree that no bolting is allowed anymore. There are bolts, they're dangerous, but we can't even replace them. And otherwise, that stuff could be climbed. So it would be amazing if they actually used stainless back in the day. And that's a desert where sink plate is okay. No, it's not. Our bolting Bible is now available again in its PDF form. So please share this video with anybody who trusts their life to bolts.